the next pandemics, the next epidemics, the next outbreaks or challenges that we have, they're going to start around the world where people are, are pushing into what were natural areas before. So when I think about uh, containment labs, I think about hazardous materials, people in suits, you know, um, biomaterials. Uh, can you talk about what actually goes on in the containment lab at UFT and how is it that the, the containment lab was ready to take on a pandemic? The CL3 lab is really two things. Um, the first is the, the physical structure, which is a, is a laboratory environment that's, that's biosafe and biosecure. So the number one thing is to keep the people safe that are working with pathogens and the other is to make sure those pathogens never leave there and then the other part of the CL3 is really the people and this is the expertise that goes into handling these pathogens and we were able to respond to the COVID pandemic for example because we had the facility operating but as much as that we had expertise that was able to work with these types of pathogens we had trainees, senior graduate students, we had postdocs, we had research associates, we had technicians who were studying other pathogens. So they were not studying SARS coronavirus 2 because we'd never heard of it before. Pat, you've been telling me that you've been working with the CL3 facility for a while now. Tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, so initially in the level three, I actually was uh, an HIV researcher. So I was part of Mario Ostrovsky's lab, and there I was doing a bunch of like patient-based uh, uh, analysis. So the day-to-day -day at the very beginning was very, very brutal. Constantly monitoring all the samples like every 12 hours just to make sure, like to see what's happening. It was very crucial to figure out like the timelines on how fast this virus replicates in the samples. When it comes to SARS-2, everything that we did basically led to some kind of change. It really kind of reinvigorated me seeing that all of these things that I do day to day, it actually translated and you can actually see people and the doctors making decisions based on our data. When the first people in Canada became infected with COVID, these people were, were treated in hospitals within Toronto. And so the research group that was up at, at Sunnybrook Hospital was able to work with virologists at McMaster University in Hamilton and come down and work with our investigators in the CL3 lab to isolate this virus from these patient samples, from swabs that were obtained from these patients. And this was important because it let us start working with the virus almost as soon as, as, as it appeared in Canada. Protected, code blue. Attention please, attention please. Protected, code blue. Can you talk about the Emerging Pandemic Infections Consortium and how did Sunnybrook become a part of this? Sure. EPIC is something that we were involved in through our Containment Level 3 work, but also by virtue of the work that we're doing here at uh, Sunnybrook. So EPIC involves not only University of Toronto, but all the hospital research institutes as well. The main bridge between those two are the patient samples. Isolating that virus from one of the patients here at Sunnybrook, or here from Sunnybrook, was really the first step. That was, without that virus, there's very little that you can do. First of all, we wanted to understand the biology of the virus, what it's doing to cells, including immune cells, what it does in different animal models. But also you need the virus to be able to develop what we call medical countermeasures. So those are things like vaccines, antivirals, antibodies, all of those things that we're now using to fight SARS coronavirus 2 and, and the COVID-19 pandemic. Can you tell me what you're excited about in terms of the research work that you're doing at Sunnybrook Hospital? Sure. So where we're standing right now is shared hospital lab. So this is the diagnostic lab. So at the peak, we're probably testing around 7,000 samples a day. So my role has really been around uh, genomics. What this means is that we're able to look at the viral genome from very beginning to very end, cover to cover. Um, a lot of the work we do is highly concentrated in the containment level three facility. So we've been looking specifically at transmission, of the variants of concern. So pretty early in 2021, we really focused on isolating those variants and we've been using those viruses to look at transmission and to share with others like we did the first one. This is the first coronavirus pandemic. It won't be the last. And I think we really need to have a firm appreciation of just virology. Like what are these viruses actually doing at the cellular level, at the individual host level, and at the global level? We really need to be looking and preparing. 
What's your vision for the lab of the future and how are we going to see this play out in the new facility that's being built? The University of Toronto and its hospital partners are coming together to build a, uh, an incredible new facility that will increase the capacity, the, the ability of the number of people that can work in this facility, the types of things that we can do because of the technology that's brought in, but also it, it handles uh, things differently. It's, it's subdivided differently in others. Individual groups can be working with different pathogens at the same time, and there's that extra level of security there. We know it takes a village to um, you know, come up with new discoveries, to do the research, to find things like new vaccines. Can you talk about the importance of having the clinician, the engineer, the chemist kind of all working on uh, you know, one research project and, and what does that sort of community collaboration bring to some of the work that you're trying to do here? So with the specific example of the Emerging and, and Pandemic Infections Consortium, this is people who had not thought about infectious disease, many of them before. They were mathematical modelers or chemists or others. And what we're trying to do is, is keep our, the momentum going and, and really be hopeful about the future. As this epic community comes together, we want them to be thinking about infection broadly. We want them to be thinking about the molecular biology that goes behind that. We want them to be thinking about aerosol transmission. We want them to be thinking about structural biology and developing new vaccines. We want them to be thinking about clinical intervention. And then even beyond that, the public policy and dealing with how do we roll out vaccines for everybody? How do we decide who gets vaccines? How do we manufacture these things? What are regulatory processes to get something approved to actually use it in, in humans? so that we can be surveying the world and, and, and looking for the potential dangers that are emerging. And so if we can keep everyone working together, we can really be much more quickly responsive. Mm -hmm.